The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Wednesday. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets somewhat flat this morning. All the markets barely in the green. We got the S&P up by two points at 44.84. Tech stocks, NASDAQ 100 up by 10 points right now, 15,365. The Dow positive by single digits, positive by five, 35,319. And the Russell positive by one point at 22.28. Excuse me. We jump around to commodities. We got crude trading there almost $68 today, $67.89. We talked to our man Teddy Kegstad from Forex-Trading-Unlocked at 40 past the hour. He's been a crude bull. We'll talk to him about the Forex markets, of course. Always interesting to get his take on crude. Quite the move we have, folks. You're talking about $6 plus just from where we were Sunday night. You had a 61 handle on crude on Sunday night. We just got a 68 handle. The moves in this market, they don't seem as ridiculous just because of the volatility we've seen recently. But you were trading at a price on crude May 21st. So we're backing it up about three months ago at right near the lows we just made. We have a low there of 61.56. We trade down to a low of 60. 174 a couple days ago sunday night that's the print we're back to 67.87 the price of crude back to short-term charts on a 15 minute you got gold giving back some of the gains we had this week recently gold's down about nine dollars this morning at 17.99 we got silver off two pennies at 23.86 and notes and bonds pretty calm action ahead of jackson hole virtual virtual event starting tomorrow and friday we got chairman powell i believe it's 10 a.m eastern time friday his remarks will air. Uh, interesting to see how that plays out. Taking a look at the 10-year on a daily for some context. We kind of just been chopping around a little bit. That's your daily. Uh, you back it up to what is that? All the way back to about nine days ago. No real huge action um, from the volatility we've been used to. Might just be waiting for that remark on Friday from the chairman. Jumping around to what else? We'll take a look at the VIX before we start taking a look at some of the equities. And we got equities moving today in a big way. We got some earnings uh, driving some equities. We got the VIX sitting at 1725. Pretty low volatility uh, in context, but still a little bit higher than we've been used to, especially at a time that you get the markets continuing to make all time highs. Now, look at the action on yesterday, though. You talk about a tight trading range, folks. You're talking about 10 points, maybe 15 if you take the literal low to high for the day. 15 points in the S&P, and we're right in that range today again. Maybe the market's just going to wait at these highs. Uh, earnings driving a little bit of the action today. We'll start it off with Dick's Sporting Goods. Quite a number for Dick's. You back things up. This stock has just been remarkable, folks. Uh, from $50 to start out 2020, you commit to COVID. It dives down to $13.46, and today you're going to open at $130, almost a 10-bagger over that time in a big way. You okay? Oh, sorry about that, folks. From 13 to 130, we're trading right there in an acceleration. S&P's positive by two. And jumping back to that Dick's Sporting Goods story, Dick's shares rise, second quarter sales surge 21%. The retailer raises forecast. Now, here are the numbers to get into for Dick's. Uh, sales rose 21% versus a year ago, 45% versus two years ago. That's the comp you love to see. Now, Dix was having good a good year. They were, I talk about it myself, anecdotal experience, um, doing some shopping during the beginning of the pandemic. So we're going back 16, 17, 18 months ago, something like that. When Dix was one of the quickest retailers that turned into curbside takeaway for retail purchases. I mean, we had never heard of such a thing, right? I mean, we're all used to going maybe to Outback Steakhouse, curbside takeaway. They kind of revolutionized the curbside takeaway market in dining and takeout. Dix was doing a great job. I picked up sneakers. I couldn't believe it. I sat in my car. I told them I was there with my phone. They walked out the sneakers, put them in my car. I didn't have to go into the store. This was a different time when we were pretty much locked down completely. Um, so they were still rising during that period of time is my point. And they're rising 21% versus a year ago, 45% versus two years ago. That's almost 50% growth over a two year period of time. And think about Dick's Sporting Goods in your head a couple of years ago, folks. They were still a mammoth 
retailer in the sports segment. Big box retailer soared during the COVID pandemic. Now let's get into the numbers because they're huge. 508 a share versus 280. Revenue, they beat by about 400 million. Yeah, 402 million. 3.27 billion versus 2.85. Uh, net income rose nearly 80% to almost half a billion dollars. Excluding items, that's 508 a share. Same store sales. 19.2% growth in the second quarter. Now, they get a special dividend here, jumping down to the line in terms of what they're talking about. Um, yeah, here it is. It's going to step up its capital spending, a special dividend of 550 per share, and it's going to double its planned share repurchase for the year to $400 million. Uh, that stock, talk about some positive action. I could even see them accelerate it even higher. Remarkable that you're talking about, I mean, what is this we're up right now? We're up $15 on a $115 stock. You're talking about 12 13% pop on the open, and you, you might even go higher. I mean, you can't overstate the numbers that they're putting up and the earnings that they're putting up in a big way. Now, on the flip side of that, Nordstrom's. Not so much the case. You get an initial spike to 40 bucks. You're back to 32.82. Now, all things in context here, right? We're just back to where we were in Nordstrom's less than a week ago, folks. Last Thursday, you were trading at this same price point. All right. Obviously, got a little bit of ahead of itself, trading up to 38 dollars coming into their earnings event. You take a look at the daily now. Nordstrom, they're going to open right near the lower boundary line of this chart. We're talking about a price point. We were at the lows. You came into it about a week ago when we just talked about. You were down near these levels also in late July. You were down at these levels in June. Near these levels, what's the low here in May? You're talking about a low of 32.55. We're trading at 32.80 right now. So you can see this will be a critical area for Nordstrom. And if you get below this area, I mean, yeah, you have an area of $30. But as you see on this chart, you get below 30 bucks on Nordstrom, and you might be diving down to $12. Don't imagine that's going to be happening. That might be an area that sets up for a nice trade. You get that? At least, folks, as we've talked about it before, you have your back against the wall. If you're wrong on this, it trades below this level. You could set your stop somewhere there because if it trades below that actual low, 28.71. Now that's a solid four dollars below still where we're trading at right now. Not sure it gets there, but it's a one-way trip of that run it had when we first got vaccine efficacy going back to November. Now getting into their numbers for Nordstrom's. Oh come on, I just added up here. Where are we? Uh, Quarterly report showed revenue for the quarter still below pre-pandemic levels. Did you hear that? That was the point I wanted to get across. Revenue is below pre-pandemic levels. You have Dick's Sporting Goods with 45% growth versus two years ago, and you got Nordstrom's uh, below. Now, two entirely different retailers, right? Dick's Sporting Goods, maybe you're spending more on uh, recreational stuff at the house, recreational stuff going out. Maybe Nordstrom's, you're not shopping for much at stores. Uh, they beat the $0.27 cents estimate for the latest quarter with $0.49 cents a share. Revenue above forecast. They raised the full year outlook. But yeah, they're still below the level. I mean, look at those three, folks. They beat on earnings, 49 versus 27. They beat on revenue, which is above forecast, and they raised the full year outlook, and they trade down 10%, even more than that now. You're down $5 on this equity. You're down pretty substantially. It's a tough one in this market, but not a surprising to see. I mean, you can't even get to pre-pandemic levels for Nordstrom. Meanwhile, you got a retailer like Dick's Sporting Goods that's 50% above where they were two years ago. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. 
Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We at the S&P is positive by two. All the major indices positive in the single digits. NASDAQ 100 positive by six. Dow positive by eight right now. And you get the Russell positive by two. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, fast market at 11 a.m. Eastern time from the TD Ameritrade Network. Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, and the team at the TD Ameritrade Network breaking down the day's market action, walking you through, setting up hypothetical trades, folks, defined risk in the option market. Uh, Kevin Hinks, we got some winners and some losers this morning in the retail sector. Good morning. Yeah, pretty amazing, Tommy. I don't think it's possible for Dick Sporting Goods to give a better report than they just gave. And for them to beat on earnings, beat on revenue, up guidance, give a special dividend. I mean, what could they have done better than they did? And it's clear that back-to-school shopping was big and back-to-school shopping – uh, was geared towards more casual clothes. Let's face it, because Nordstrom, on the other half of that, didn't do as well. So you're getting two different apparel retailers moving in two different directions, Tommy. But uh, that's why there's a trade. It's fun either way, right? If you play Oof. for not necessarily directional play, but just a big move, both can be profitable in either direction, Tommy. So, it's a, yeah, it's a fun day for sure. Pretty staggering moves, man. I mean, Dix, and it has been a one-way rocket ship for this stock, man. I mean, remarkable. I have to back it up to a three-year weekly to see the COVID lows at 13 bucks. We're almost going to open at a 10-bagger off those lows, let alone coming into it at 50 bucks. I was reading about Dix. I think they're up 45% on a two-year basis, Kevin. And I said, you know, to kick off the show, I said, folks, think about in your head, Dick Sporting Goods two years ago. They were a mammoth company even then, man. And to grow at 45% on that basis, uh, remarkable. That company, I've talked about my own anecdotal experience. So you see, Kevin, sometimes where management, and it's just one experience, but it really was, man, how they came together so quickly. They had curbside delivery for sneakers early on in the pandemic. Uh, just an opportunity for growth. And Dick's really seizing it, man. And I was surprised kind of a little bit by uh, Nordstrom's, Kevin. I mean, not not the worst in numbers, you know, to, to, to really pummel that stock in terms of they, they beat on earnings, they beat on revenue, right? Um, but there's a lot more going on in terms of outlook on that equity. And really, though, Nordstrom's as well, you talk about volatility. We're just trading, Kevin, for context, back to where we were last Thursday, not even five trading d days ago, which is just speaks to kind of the moves we're seeing, especially in some of these, you know, volatile stocks like retail, uh, especially. So earnings season marches on, Kevin. We're coming into, of course, Jackson Hole, the virtual symposium going on tomorrow. Uh, this market I was talking about in the beginning of the show. 
Uh, what's your take here, whether we're, we're possibly just waiting maybe? Because yesterday's action in the S&P, Kevin, I think we had a trading range from the literal low to high of maybe 15 points in the S&Ps from low to high yesterday. Uh, pretty low volatile day as we wait for a pretty important event possibly coming up with the chairman of the Fed and that symposium for, for the virtual event coming up. Well, Tommy, I think that we are waiting for Friday. I think Jerome Powell's statements on Friday and we don't say never and we don't say always, but I think there's a high probability that he's going to give a dovish uh, take on the economy and tapering. So I think the markets favor that. Um, but I think, yeah, you know, up until today, remember, uh, we were waiting for some pretty big economic data today, tomorrow and Friday. So I think, yeah, the market was stalling and waiting and keeping their powder dry for today's numbers. Now, we're very unchanged to start the day as well today, but we're still looking at a number that was, you know, the actual economic data that's coming out right now, not the forward-looking data, the data that's measuring right now, is showing a pretty strong economy, except for new and used vehicles, right? Transportation is what's weighing down some of these retail sales and durable goods numbers. Besides that, pretty good number. X transportation up 0.7. That, that was a nice beat. So there is strength in this economy in the real-time numbers. But the sentiment numbers going forward are starting to uh, drift a little bit. You saw that show up in the core capital goods part of the durable goods report. So, uh, you know, you know, this number was solid. There's still more to come. We got GDP tomorrow. That's the second look at GDP. So that's not as much as volatile. But then you've got income and outlays on Friday and Jerome speaking, Jerome Powell speaking at nine. That's the big event of the week, Tommy. Hey, I'm going to jump topics real quick um, for some of the Chinese stocks. So interesting here for the SEC chief, right, Kevin? He was out there, I think it was yesterday, maybe talking about um, the, the, the potential for delisting coming up. I mean, I guess what the deal is, is that within about three years uh, of becoming a public company, you got to open your books out for audit. And what's your take on it? This one's pretty interesting here that, that basically these stocks almost seem like they're teed up, in my opinion, my opinion, to get delisted if this marches on where we're going, which is pretty interesting when you think about trading stocks that, that might be teed up to get delisted within, delisted within a potential couple of years. And it's all out there for, you know, personal bias folks, whether you think it will happen, whether you think it won't, whether they kind of, you know, get that in line to make sure they can be listed. But this this article is pretty interesting that the, the to, to factor in a variable like that, Kevin, within trading potentially these equities. And I'm not trading them. But what do you what, do you, what, what caught your eye when you, you see something like that for the SEC chief? I think our relationship with China is always extremely complicated between politics and actual um, economies. So I think a lot of time there's threats, but no action. So, but this SEC chairman does it. The question is, does he really want to go there? And cool. you know, China stock, they've given them a reason to be more skeptical of these names with what they've done. A lot of investors have lost a lot of money when the Chinese cool. government cracked down on these companies. So I think this is in the early stages. I think there's going to be a lot of play. A lot of these stocks have just rallied because Frankly, yeah. China came out with some good economic news and some relaxing of travel standards. That's why you're seeing the uh, casinos rally. Those are always a great China proxy and a way to play China without having to go and play China stocks. So, uh, you know, I, I'm going to watch this play out. I am trading um, Win Resorts. Full disclosure, that's the way I trade a, a China proxy. I don't touch any of these other ones. There's too much control from the Chinese government. Uh, to play those stocks like that. It's a great point, man, because I asked you because as a trader, when you got stocks that get cut in half, right, you know, um, like Alibaba, for instance, um, of course, you're looking for volatility if you're a trader. I mean, you just got a $20 pop in Alibaba. And to some degree, I, I think that China wants to clamp things down, but but they don't want to clamp down the growth of the country. So there's going to be possibly some venues there. But it's a great point, man, because, yeah, look at these stocks. Whether you, and you talked about them yesterday as well and talk about a move yesterday to continue that move. Las Vegas Sands and Wynn both up pretty dramatically. Well, Kevin, we got a lot going on. What are you guys going to be talking about on the program coming up at 11 o'clock today? Big day, probably the, the highest profile name of the week, Salesforce. 
will be in the first segment of the show. And then, yeah, you heard it for here first. Kevin Hinks will talk about makeup today in the second section with what like folio. We'll look at Ulta, and then we'll talk Splunk in the third segment of the show. All earnings plays today. Pretty cool, man. Alta from 124 to 373. Salesforce has been a rocket ship, too. We do have some Salesforce in my newsletter, folks, to put that one out. You're a cloud company. You're in the Dow there. They've been on quite a run, but they got a lot to prove, man. They just traded from a price point. It's been quite a run. What were we at? 208 in May, and we're coming in at 260 for their numbers uh, coming out. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the conversation, man. We look forward to the program, as always. We'll be watching at 11 o'clock today. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Thanks, Kevin. Take care. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back for the market open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&P right now up three points. Tech stocks trading higher as well. You get the Dow pulling back on the open right now. You have the NASDAQ 100 making a high on the open. There's your high print, 15,389 pre-market. S&P is climbing up to 40. Wait, where were we? 44.92 was the high yesterday. Uh, yes, yesterday early, not quite up to that level right now. S&P is positive by one point from the close. Russell sneaking into the negative on there on the open on the Russell by three points. 
Uh, jumping around to what else we got going on. So Apple, let's start it off with Apple. Apple right now, we're trading flat at 149.63. I'm going to put this on a long-term chart here to see the run that we've had. Uh, yeah, six pennies back in, when is that, 19, late 80s? I mean, even back it up. Look where we're trading at. You're talking about trading at, in the context of where we are today, in the late 99, 40 cents, 50 cents. I mean, Apple was a big company back then, folks. They were, not compared to where they are now. You had a run back then. Now, zooming in, point being, Tim Cook. He's been at Apple as CEO 10 years. Remarkable it's been that long. And look at this chart since he's been there, folks. CNBC had an article, pretty staggering statistics on Apple. Uh, you back it up to when he was there. So what are we talking about? August of 2011, basically, you had Apple trading essentially at about $15 when he comes in to that equity. Now, man, we were just trading at 40 bucks as of recently as 2019, right? So this article is gonna to speak to the fact that it's up a thousand percent. It's basically a 10 bagger over that time. And we just showed it, it's from 15 to 150. Well, things had waned a bit. You were at 40 bucks at the beginning of 2019 before things have really accelerated for this equity have they, um, as they've of course taken advantage of everything going their way basically over the last couple of years, whether it's uh, the recurring revenue they have going on now or just the shift to mobile and living online. So they speak to Apple CEO 10 years. Here's how the company's thrived. It has thrived indeed. Just some cool graphics here where they've been. Revenue wise, you come into it at a price point of, whoops, where did we just go? Scroll up there. Uh, revenue was pushing about 27 billion as he came in. Now we're pushing 86 billion on a quarterly basis. The stock price, there you are. It's about a 10 bagger. And as I said, I mean, remarkable. As of 2019, Apple had barely beat the S&P. But man, it's been quite a run over the last two and a half years. This tech stocks have really plowed higher. The FANG stocks have carried this market dramatically higher. And you see it in this chart, the impact a stock like Apple can have. We're talking about 1,000% versus the S&P, which still is a pretty great return over a 10-year period, up about 200. What are we talking about? S&P, 16% uh, annually over the period, right? Staggering statistics still. The S&P over that 10 years, Apple, though, 32% annual return. Now, a lot of that annual return compounded because of the run it had over the last two, two and a half years. Market value, you start that at about 400 billion. We're pushing $2.5 trillion. Remarkable. Uh, and new products, they talk about no staggering, staggering new products. They had the earbuds in there. They have the Apple Watch in there over that time. But man, they've really transformed things into... Uh, a powerhouse in terms of revenue, right? Recurring revenue, the cloud, et cetera. But pretty cool, 10 years in terms of what he's done with that equity when you think about where it was already and the run that it's had tenfold. All right, jumping back to what else we have going on. McDonald's, they're running out of milkshakes in the UK. Supply constraints continuing to hit a lot of equities out there. Said on Tuesday, ran out of milkshakes across the country. The US fast food giant also been deprived of some bottled beverages throughout its 1,250 British outlets this week. I mean, you're just going to see these continue to pop up. Not sure this is really going to hit McDonald's that much. It's just in the UK. Um, put McDonald's back on a 15-minute. We're basically flat with the market right now. Interesting. We got tech stocks again trading higher as we have all the other markets pulling back so far this morning. All right, let's jump down the line with other stocks reporting. Um, so Johnson & Johnson out there talking about booster shot, that that would boost uh, the numbers in terms of sharply increasing the levels of antibodies. Now, it's interesting, these vaccine stocks, in terms of how they're trading, there's Johnson & Johnson actually flat right now after trading higher a little bit. You have Pfizer right now giving back some of the gains it's had recently, down 1%, and Moderna. Talk about volatility across the board. We were just up to 418, put this thing on a three-year weekly for the context of the run it has had, all-time highs, 497, only a couple of weeks ago. We're almost $100 off that high right now. Anytime you run from 150 to 500 folks in the span of a few months, you might give some of it back pretty quickly, as we all should be aware. All right, jumping down the line for retailers. We got Express. Um, unexpected profit for the latest quarter, two cents a share, 30 cents a share loss was the expectation. Revenue above, they were higher in the pre-market, EXPR. As I said, interesting, look at that. They give it back. These retailers, man, it is a tough deal. Let's see how Nordstrom's trading, because as I mentioned, they were pretty, pretty strong numbers for Nordstrom to be down 15%, but the market not having any of, any type of a miss when you got competitors like Dick's. Yeah, I thought this thing might pop even at the, high, at the, at the open, as I said. Early in the show, 
and Kevin mentioned it as well, you can't do any better. A $5 special dividend, they're just saying, we got so much money, we're not even going to put it into a dividend. We're just going to give you a special dividend, and we're going to have a dividend, and we're going to have a buyback. Uh, Dix, I think that might be an all-time high. Yeah, of course it is. 134.40. Look at that bar. Look at this run it's had. Backing things up. Yeah, there you go. Quite the chart for Dick Sporting Goods accelerating higher to all-time highs in a big way, up 17% today. Nordstrom trading lower by double digits so far today. Jumping around to what else we got going on, Shoe Carnival out with their numbers. Not familiar with Shoe Carnival. Uh, they make almost double the market what they were looking for, $1.54, more than double the 75-cent estimate. Uh, revenue exceeding forecast, comp sales up 11.4%. As we jump over, S. CVL, they're up 2% on those numbers. Urban Outfitters I want to get to. So $1.28 a share, beat the $0.77 cents estimate. As Kevin was saying, everybody seems to be beaten in the current quarter. The only question is whether you're going to beat in the forward quarters. Coming, um, I mean, even Nordstrom beat their revenue estimate with $0.49 cents versus $0.27. They, uh, revenue was above forecast as well, and you're trading down double digits. Urban Outfitters... Revenue above forecast benefited from a sizable increase in digital sales. That's what you want to see. Guess what, though? However, mentioned that it's dealing with supply chain issues, and they are trading low. The market doesn't want to hear that, folks, because uh, that may hurt profits. It may hurt the ability to be in the future, and you get Urban Outfitters down almost 10%. Pretty similar reaction to where we are in Nordstrom. Nordstrom down about 15%, as in getting punished for pretty strong numbers across the board. Toll Brothers. It's just beat after beat, $1.87, 32 cents above estimates. Home builders' revenue essentially in line. Low overall inventories in the housing market. Low mortgage rates help boost the company's results. They are higher in the pre-market. Let's see how they're trading on the open. Toll Brothers this morning extending those gains up 3.4% as housing continues to accelerate in a big way. Into it, out with their numbers, the tax software. Beat estimates by 38 cents. They make a buck 97. Revenue topped estimates. I mean, it's just constant. Revenue top beats on the earnings. Upbeat outlook. Market loves to see that. Raised its dividend and boosted the buyback. There's like the, the trifecta of what you want to hear as an investor. And we're up 2.8%, giving back some of the gains it had pre-market. And uh, yeah, the 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 games the, the meme stops, stocks were rocking yesterday, folks. Let's see how they're trading this morning. GameStop down 1.7% today after trading up $55 yesterday. You had AMC extending the gains up 4.5% right now for that equity as well. And let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we got the NASDAQ 100 trading higher. You got Google up half a percent. You got Microsoft up a quarter percent. Apple, we talked about, up two tenths percent. Facebook shares up half a percent. Quite a market, folks, in a big way. And we jump over to the VIX. Volatility index right now, 1715. We might get a 16 handle if this market continues higher. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. We'll be talking some Forex with our man, Teddy Kegstat. We'll be right back, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the Dow negative 68 points right now. We get the S&Ps positive by one. NASDAQ positive by 31 points. The Russell positive by 22 points. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad, folks. Every trading day, you can reach Teddy at forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to every Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. We talk some Forex. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So I was checking in on the Forex markets, getting ready for you this morning. We have a little bit of chop uh, uh, across where we've been, but interesting action with the dollar, of course. We got some action in commodities. We have some action in crude in a big way off the lows we had Sunday night. And we're coming into uh, a virtual Jackson Hole symposium going on with Chairman Powell out there Friday morning at 10 o'clock. What have you been right. looking at in this Forex market, Teddy, with everything we got going on right now? Well, since Sunday night, the dollar was under pressure from across the board with most crosses. And uh, we've seen a little bounce today, you know, and I like it. I think uh, the way we started off the week, you know, the dollar had been strong and it just kind of needed, I think it was a profit taking move if you really look at it compared to most currencies. Um, interesting today um, where we see the volatility and most of the range right now where you have as far, as far as like depth from highs to lows, you're seeing it in the Japanese yen and, and then in the Swiss franc. And I think that's a good indicator of where dollar strength really is right now, showing that, you know, Usually when you have a big move or whatever, you're going to have the euro and the pound have more action than you will in the Swiss. The same is going on in Asia. You have the yen where you have a lot of action today where it's been going sideways for days, you know. So and as far as the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar, their range is pretty tight. So when you see that, those are the flight to quality currencies that tells me that dollar dollar strength is coming back into the market. You know, even with the U.S. dollar Canada, it's kind of interesting how they're having a pretty decent trade to the upside pushing resistance today so that's what I'm looking at right now is seeing that dollar strength I think is going to creep into the market over the next uh, couple sessions especially as we go into the symposium on Friday and stuff like that and I think that you're going to probably see the euro and um, the pound continue to kind of fall back against the dollar but I'm not expecting any big moves right now I just think you're going to see a nice trend but I watch out for the US dollar Swiss and the US dollar yen especially because the US dollar yen looks like it's going to break out today the upside yeah it's interesting man i remember when we were first starting to chat with you which is amazing we're going back years ago um mm -hmm. talking about that that uh the swiss franc um almost mm -hmm. at parity and we've been under mm -hmm. there for some time now man um that i because it was remarkable we were right at that one point i remember it so often you were talking to us about um you know parity over there and how i've been stuck at mm -hmm. it and really quite a quite a difference that we're now under you know we're at 91 you were as low as 87 to end last year right um but not quite back at parity yet for those two pretty strong obviously currencies when you look at them independently swiss franc and the dollar both of them um right. what's your take kind of you know, on the, the new maybe normal for, for, for that pairing? Uh, as far as for the Swiss? 
Yes. Um, I, th- I think that the Swiss, I mean, like, is parody something we could get back to? It's very possible. Um, I think that what you really need to watch is the interest rate market. If we do start to see market rates kick, kick up, which we know the Fed's not going to do a thing, you know, but if you watch the 10 year and the 30 year, they're trending lower slightly, you know, and if they actually have another slip, especially with the lockdowns that are going on with Australia and, you know, what have you and New Zealand, as these spread into the fall, you know, I mean, we're hitting it very interesting period right now especially in front of october i mean me being an s p guy i love october you know we're always looking for a big slide um but interestingly enough you know in the last five months you've had more money poured into the equities markets than you have in the last 12 years that's including the v-shaped dip last year where people were getting funded to put money into the market you know so that tells me that we're setting up for a very big interest rate move whether the fed wants to do anything or not you have the New Zealand and some other countries now that are looking at raising rates, how long can we stay at zero like the ECB, you know, and and hold that line? I don't think that the market's going to, the market no matter what is going to move and that's going to cause the currencies to really start to explode and that could put pressure on the Swiss. That's where you could see the dollar back at parity versus the Swiss franc because you know that the ECB is not doing anything. The Swiss aren't going to do anything. And even though our Fed probably will not do anything, we could see that if we start having lockdown issues and especially problems with the economies globally, the Treasury bonds are going to tank. The 10 year is going to tank, you know, and that's going to cause dollar bulls to come out of this, uh, you know, from everywhere across the board, I think. Yeah. Um, the. Because it, it was, yeah, just taking a look even the longer term, let's say on a monthly, I mean, you had, uh, mm-hmm. oops, excuse me. Yeah, chopping around at that one point for almost like five years, man, now between about right. 95 and one. Um, and we mm-hmm. might be in a little bit of a lower area for that. But I appreciate the take as usual. Mm-hmm. Uh, to the yen, Teddy, if we could. So we're yes, sitting just sure. under 110, um, taking a look at the daily. As you said, a little bit of a chop kind of recently where we've been, maybe mm-hmm. between about 109, the higher portion, like 110.60 up to that high of 111. Um, yes. what do you, where do you see this going? Of course, this one, of course, we got a lot of bulls, out, uh, gold bulls out there, just gold traders in right. general. The yen so important, the dollar so important um, as we sit at about 110 in the U.S. dollar yen this morning. Well, I really think that we're looking at it and we're about to have a breakout to the upside with the U.S. dollar yen. So I really think that over the next like week and a half to two weeks, it's very likely that we're going to see them making higher move highs and take out that 111 area. You know, I really do think that we're going to start trending higher. There's just Watch there's a lot of, fun, there's a lot of there. fundamentals. Out. <laughs> there's a lot of fundamentals that are pointing towards that starting to happen. You know, now I yeah. be leery. We have a, we have a holiday market coming up in a week. You know, we have the end of this week and then we have next week is our yeah. last full trading weeks before we have Labor Day, you know, and then we have the fall coming. So we're heading into this middle part of third quarter. I think the markets are going to be relatively quiet over the next couple of days, but I think these trends are starting to base and we're going to set the momentum where we're going to trend into September, September into October. I don't think we're just going to be grinding like the end right now has been basically going sideways for this whole summer, especially the yeah. last couple of weeks. I think we're going to start to see a leg higher, that we're going to start to see higher move highs. When we see a sell off, it's just going to be a break to buy before it snaps right back up, you know? Yeah. And it's got a little so. bit of a move today up 31, 31 ticks at uh, about 110. And uh, and how about crude, man? This one. Talk about volatility. Mm-hmm. The moves don't almost almost don't look as large as they are because of the moves we've had recently. <laughs> um, but on a 15 right. minute basis, man, I mean, you know, I just go back five days on this chart, Teddy. And last mm-hmm. Wednesday we were at almost 67.50. You trade down to right. 61.74. And just like that, we're actually above the 67.50 we're sitting right, right where we were five days ago you got six dollars of movement down and up that's a 10 percent move in crude mm-hmm. down and up um in five days but quite a little i was thinking of you when we had 60 we mm-hmm. 74 man um right. but by the time we could get you back on the program by wednesday we're pushing almost 68 again what's what are you seeing in that crude market I'm I'm still bullish. I don't think that these swings are because of algos. I think it's just an you know you know the oil markets have a different rollover process than most futures markets. They they have besides the option expiration, the futures rolls every every month. You know, so as far as deliveries, you remember there was a lot of delivery issues um, a few six months ago, you know, three months ago still, and what sure. have you. Now we don't have those issues. You know, right. It's, short run we don't have them you know but we are coming into the potential to have a lot of those issues you know especially when you know we have a president said hey you guys overseas start turning those pipes on and they're like hey dude 
we don't care about what you're saying, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, and yeah. I think that especially if we have any, I mean, we don't know how this whole Afghanistan thing is going to go, you know, wait till they start, you know, working with their buddies in the Middle East, you know? Yeah. So oil's no, going to a hundred, buddy. It's going to a hundred. Listen, the variables out there, man, the, there's some yeah. volatility in that market for sure. Teddy, man, we appreciate the education and the conversation Thanks, each Tommy. Wednesday, man. You have a great week. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. You too. Stay cool. You too, man. Thanks, Teddy. We'll be right back, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave. Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps flat right now, 44.83. We get the NASDAQ 100 tech stocks in the green as well, up 12 points. Talking about record high in the NASDAQ. Dow barely in the red by 55 points in the Russell. Catching a little bit of a pop. Zooming in on the Russell to see the volatility we had this morning. Those are 15-minute bars we're dealing with. The Russell was at 22.20. Just like that, we're turning at 22.20. 33 were positive by five points after coming into negative action in the Russell. What else we got going on? I want to touch briefly on what I referenced talking to Kevin Hicks. So the SEC chief out there warning the clock is ticking on delisting Chinese stocks. So interesting. I was not aware of this. Uh, there is a three-year deadline that requires Chinese firms to permit inspections of their financial audits. If businesses refuse, their shares can be delisted from the NYSE and NASDAQ as soon as 2024. The path is clear. Gary Gensler said, SEC uh, chair, 
The clock is ticking. Um, the tough stance would seem to squash the hopes of some Wall Street that Gensler might drag his feet in implementing the mandate from Congress and give Beijing more time to strike a deal with regulators to allow for the gravy train of Chinese stock sales to continue. And they shouldn't, folks. I mean, the people that got worked in Diddy, I'd be furious. I mean, that's just a straight out hustle, folks. They pushed that out to the paper um, in a big way. China did. Can you imagine being over there in China saying, yeah, let that company push it out. Let them push out the paper. We'll bring in the, the uh, investor money, and, and then we'll tell the world that, guess what? We're clamping down on that company in a big way. Those types of disclosures, those types of risks, you better believe it, folks. You're trading over there in China. Um, strong words, and like I was referencing, pretty interesting trading with that type of a variable hanging out there. The other side of that is, at some point, they are going to need growth. This is a slapdown of the big tech giants over there in China. Jack Ma, maybe the top dog over there, um, getting smacked down in a big way. But China wants to grow their economy, folks. They want to grow it in a big way. They're probably just going to smack them down a little bit, but they still need to have some growth over there with their plans to dominate the world. And I'm not joking. Um, so at some point you'll see it, but I don't know. They might, might not need um, American investors to that tune. We'll see. Appreciate you starting your day off with me, folks. We got the S&Ps positive by two, NASDAQ positive by 23. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. And of course, we got Fast Market at 11, Larry Pesavento, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien, my dad this afternoon. Thanks so much, folks. Stay tuned. Basil's coming up right now.